Chief Mrs. Anna Idowu Didiolu Awolowo, popularly known as HID Awolowo, the wife of late political legend Obafemi Awolowo, died on the 19th of September 2015. She was 99 years old. We invited a young biographer, Adidara Odugua, who has written this compelling book titled Chief Obafemi Awolowo, The Political Moses, to discuss why very few books are written about Nigeria's icons and also review his book on Awolowo. But before we show you his interview, here's an introduction to the book Chief Obafemi Awolowo, The Political Moses. Nice to have you on the channel's book club. Thank you very much, sir. Great. Congrats <coughs> on your book. Thank you. Chief Obafemi Awolowo, The Political Moses. Moses. Uh, we don't have too many history books in Nigeria. And, and even in the schools, history is not very much encouraged. So I'm a big history fan. Uh, I've read a lot of his historical books, and I really enjoy them. So I was excited when I saw this book. Thank and you. then knowing that it was written by a young man like you um, got me more excited. Uh, Thank you. Well done. Well done. But before we, we go into your book, um, HID, Chief Awolowo's wife, just died recently. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Are there books written on HID, Awolowo? Um, thank you. I, I like the way you started by saying there are no in all books on history in, in Nigeria. Uh, I will want to but stress that a bit. In the US, on Abraham Lincoln alone, in 2010, about uh, 2,125 books have been written on him. 2,125 yeah, books. And As of 2010, yeah, on Abraham Lincoln alone. Exactly. And, and, and if you have to compare the time he died, he died in 1865. Uh, 1865 to 2015, that should be around uh, 150 years. Which means that in every 25 years, at least 350 books have been written on him. Whoa. And Nigeria got our independence uh, in 1960. If you have to compare 1960 to date, that's about 55 years. How many such books have been written about Nigerian founding fathers? Mm. Very few. Mm. So maybe it's not the culture of Africa to read or the culture of Nigeria to write books. Well, maybe people too are not interested in, in their own history. Uh, I have a personal uh, experience when I have to talk to one of Nigerian found, uh, past head of states and about, could have mentioned something on him and he said, there were two books I've written about me. And I said, two books? About the, one of the past head of states in Nigeria? Yes, yes. Just two books? Yes, and he said, two books I've written. And um, Mr. Dugu, I think maybe after this last one is being published and uh, launched, I would think about adding another. And I was trying to explain further that, uh, like, every day we spend on Earth should be accounted for. One single person can have different personalities, and that can be written about. Um, if I have to write about you now as a presenter, that can be a part. I can also write about you as a family man. I can also write about you as a Yoruba man. So, these are different parts. So, so there are various dimensions exactly, to each exactly. individual, particularly exactly. those we consider to be icons exactly. in our society. Exactly. So I asked you about HID. Are there so, books written about HID? HID was almost 100 years old. Uh, Wonderful woman, legendary woman. Hmm. Where are the books about? I, I, I have not, never seen any book written about HID. I'm not saying there have not been books written about her, but I can't find the books out there. So I'm wondering, are there books written about it? I think, I think there is only a book written by one Mr. Dini Yi uh, on HID. And the book is titled uh, The Jewel. 
uh, uh, the jewel. The jewel. Uh, HID, the chief minister, HID, the title of the book. And uh, HID herself wrote a book on herself, a memo of jewel okay. by HID, and I think that should be the, these are, these should be the two books on her. Okay. I'm not sure if we have any other books written on, uh, just last week when I went there to pay my own condolences, uh, our granddaughter, Mrs. Uh, Ayatola, told me that uh, we should write something about Mama. I said, of course, uh, we are going to do something on, on her. That is it. I have to say that the quality of the book is great. Thank you. you know, and much. and um, I really enjoyed it. Thank you. I enjoyed reading it. I read it in two days. Mm, I good. enjoyed reading it. Now, um, now, Chief Obafemi Aulawa himself, uh, there enough, is there, is, are there enough books written about him? I know he was a prolific writer yeah. himself. Um, and and he, compared to a lot of other political leaders we've had in Nigeria, he really he wrote quite a number of useful books. But generally speaking, if, if, what's your take on that? Yeah, if I have to be correct, I will add, he had written about uh, 12 books. 12 books. He started in 1947 uh, with the part uh, through freedom, that part of Nigeria through freedom, and then he ended in 1985. Before his death, he had a book that he was trying to uh, publish, and he want, he want to, he was thinking that book would be published and launched in 2000 and, uh, 1987. That's Travels of Democracy and uh, the Rule of Law. But he finished his last book that he was, that was published and launched was in uh, 1985. 1985. Yeah, and, and, and that is my path through uh, prison, 1985. So apart from the book, the book he, he wrote by himself, there are, let's say, not up to 20 books that have been written about law, including uh, this political Moses. But and if you look at the number of books that have been written by Olo and by others on Olo, my last search on Google, we have about, uh, he was mentioned in about 655 books. 655 books. And I think that is the highest when you have to compare with any other nationalist in Nigeria. In fact, the books on Aulawo and the book he wrote by himself is almost more than all the books put together that are written by all other nationalists. Mm, in Nigeria. Yeah, and I want to say that can be the, the advantage of free education in this part of the, the legacy of Aulawo in Western Nigeria compared to other legacies in other parts of Nigeria. Awolowo was a very interesting personality, uh, I mean, as you described in, in your book. And you described him as a political Moses. If reading through this book, one gets the impression clearly that you are a big fan of Jifoba Femi Awolowo. Is that correct? Uh, I don't want to say yes, and I don't want to say no. And I will tell you why. I was only two years old when Awolowo died in 1987. And like the question many people have asked me, including uh, the former High Commissioner to the UK, uh, Alaji Tafida, he said when he heard about a book on Nawolo by a Nigerian student in the UK, he was amazed and he said the person should either be his own age mate or older. So he later invited me to the High Commissioners and when he saw me, he said, I was thinking the writer should be older than Mr. Odugu, about seeing you now, I'm sure you will not have sat in your room <laughs> to write a book on Chief Aulo. Maybe you would have made some consultations and just of it to show you that I was not uh, an hourist from the onset. I got carried away when I started to, to compare achievements and I was trying to see, because I was always disturbed about uh, underdevelopment in Nigeria, about uh, unemployment, about a lot of things that we are battling with. So I I was interested in trying to investigate how I can, I can bring in history of our past nationalists. But at a point, I was having a manuscript uh, of the three uh, major nationalists that we have in Nigeria, Amadou Bello, Zik of Africa, and... Um, what do you mean by manuscripts of them? You had written on... Yeah, yeah I was, yes. Uh, in each, originally, I was having manuscript of the three of them. Oh, oh, you were working on the three exactly, of them. Exactly, exactly. In, in, I, I one, in this one volume or dif in different... In one volume, volume, in one place. And I titled it Bolika Moses. But at a point, I realized that only little could be said about achievement, ideological politics, ideological orientation, and impact. 
I was more concerned about that. I was not really concerned about names. And the only thing I, I, I will say I have now as a regret is that I was a Yoruba man. I wish I would happen to be an German or an Hausa man. Why? That would have made it very suitable for me to write about him. Why? Because people, many people would have um, criticized me that I actually wrote about Awu because he happened to be a Yoruba man. And you are a Yoruba man. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that puts you in a bit of a uh, is put you on a spot, really, because yes, exactly. somebody might think that because you are Yoruba, and I, I will, am, I am having, is a, is a, like you have said, yeah. Yoruba icon. Exactly. So, exactly. Oh, interesting. What's the biggest lesson you took from putting together this book with regards to Nigeria? Um, for me, I think the biggest lesson is that. Um, People will always like to go for quality. And whenever you are trying to, to do anything, not only book writing, just put in your best and make sure it's of the highest quality. No matter how much you call it, people are going to patronize you. Mm. For me, that is the biggest lesson. Mm. How about from the life of Obafemi Uh the, the lesson for the life, from the life of Obafemi Awolowo as documented in this book, is that we should be focused, should be determined. And that is why I have uh, my own personal code that uh, what excellence cannot achieve in a century, determination can in a day. Mm. Once you are determined, even if you are not the best, you are going to achieve what the best cannot achieve. Mm. And that is what you can see in the life of our law. He started with nothing, he had no father at tender age, he rough through everything through life. And he also he was lucky to have a very good wife who supported uh, him in his endeavors. And although he was not able to achieve what we think is his political power is to be the president of Nigeria, but he led in many ways as Nigerian president. Hmm. And that means that even when you when you are determined that you are unable to achieve your your major goal, at least you will end up achieving the next to that your major goal. Hmm. For me, that is a lesson for everybody. Hmm. Well done, Dara. <laughs> well you. done. Thank you. Good work. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on the channel. Thank Book you I hope you have enjoyed today's show. Please join us on any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen. I'm Olakunle Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.